Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and welcome to Scent OS Stream version 9. We'll be exploring what Scent OS Stream is and what you get by using Stream, and we are looking at the desktop right now. Let me clear things out here, and we can really get into this pretty quick. It won't be much of a review just because the desktop environment here is super simple, not much going on at all, because this is the server edition with a GUI. So it doesn't even give you a background. Of course, there are different versions of this. You can get the workstation, which is more of a desktop environment that most people would use if they plan on using the operating system for things such as word processing or even searching the web and what have you. But this is really server-based. If I go to the top left where there's activities and I open that up, we start noticing that this is utilizing GNOME 40 as its desktop environment. We can search at the top for various different things, although there's not much installed on the system. Again, super minimal in order to run your servers. And most of us are aware that CentOS was an enterprise level RHEL or Red Hat Enterprise Linux clone that gave us the ability to use RHEL because it's a very stable distribution for our server and production environments. And here, not much, we can go between workspaces and just see a very few minimal tools, Firefox, our default web browser, files, the file manager, a software store if needed, help, terminal, and then to show the rest of these applications. Now for us that are familiar with CentOS, they recently shifted their focus from a stable release model to a rolling release that's going to be just ahead of the RHEL as an upstream model, if you will, which if you don't know what that means, it's very similar to Fedora. If you've used it, they're going with a new model, which is kind of sad to see. So if you haven't already upgrade CentOS 8, because you're not going to receive support for it anymore. The end of life is December 31st, which is coming in real quick. Before we talk more about that and some of the ways that you can migrate your system, let's keep going here in the applications. We have the tour app, which comes up as soon as you install CentOS 9 stream. We have a video player, a calculator, text editor, settings, a system monitor, which we'll be checking out, some basic utilities, and an image application. In the top right corner, we have access to our wired or wireless connections, what kind of load we're using, depending on if you have power settings for like a laptop, sound volume control, and then of course settings, locking the computer, logging in and out of the current user, as well as restarting the computer. Again, not much here, but this is mainly for a server environment, which is quite interesting because I feel like Stream getting away from the stable release model and becoming a rolling release model is going to be a problem for most of us who have known Scent OS for years and years as a stable clone of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux distribution. It's sad to see Scent OS change things around, but here in the top, we have the current calendar with the day as well as any new events and a do not disturb if you don't want to get notifications. And that's really it as far as the desktop environment goes here. I didn't really want to go through too much of the desktop because that's not necessarily what it's meant to be used as. Um, stream will be that case. At least I don't see it being used for much other than that. Um, seems like the CentOS team is now focused on making this CentOS stream what I think of as a testing distribution that runs upstream from RHEL. So I guess that RHEL can sell more of their enterprise software to end users. It seems very strange that CentOS decided to go this route because there's plenty of other distros that offer the same thing with rolling release models. And CentOS has built a very nice community and foundation on being an extremely stable distribution with of course long-term support on the images that they provide, just what you need for servers, and it's interesting that they made this switch. Let's check out a couple more things before we get out of here. But before we do, smash that like button for me and subscribe below. Only about 4% of people are actually subscribed, and you can continue your learning by following the channel. All right, let's restart things and get a good view of the processes and resources taken by the system after initial reboot. All right, with a fresh reboot, we're going to check out the system monitor. 
let's get in here real quick and see what we have running. If we go over to the resources tab, we can see that the CPU is running right around 16% for me. I have 1.1 gigs out of eight gigs, which is medium tier for most distributions. And most of that's probably for the GNOME desktop environment here, GNOME 40. If we check out about the system, we can see what we're running currently. So what this is is CentOS Stream 9, the 64-bit version running GNOME version 40. They're using Wayland as the Windows server, and I'm currently running this in a virtualized environment. This is being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X with eight cores and around eight gigs of memory. So let's talk about some of those alternatives because I know a lot of you probably were using CentOS for an enterprise grade production or server environment, and you didn't want to pay the large price tag of RHEL support. So what are some alternatives to RHEL that are free? Well, if you want something that remains consistent with the old CentOS philosophies, you might want to check out Rocky Linux, which I'll put a link in the description below to check out. Some of the community members from CentOS went straight to Rocky and started their own stable release of RHEL, following it as a one-to-one -one clone. Check that one out. The second one I can suggest is Alma Linux. That one's also a one-to-one -one clone of RHEL. I'm not sure what the community consists of here, but let's say you want something more rolling. Of course, you can actually upgrade CentOS 8, which again is almost at the end of life, at the end of this month, it will be at the end of life, to Cent OS 9 Stream. Most people will not want to do this, but it is an option. You will be switching what type of model you'll be following from a stable to a rolling release model. And for production environments, that might not be the best approach or for servers as well, just because you don't want the system breaking down on you because packages have changed where you're perfectly content with using old packages and just maintaining stuff like security updates and just basic updates aka maintenance updates again sad to see this go but it is what it is hopefully you got some information out of this explored what sent os stream 9 is what the desktop looks like some of the resource usage and some of the other options that you have. I'm actually surprised that they even have a server quote unquote edition anymore. And that's why I, I thought I'd show this one off instead of the workstation. I do have videos on the workstation if you're interested in that uh, previously that I've done. It hasn't changed much other than it's using GNOME 40 now. If you want me to do a video on the workstation edition as well, let me know in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.